Well, hey there, and welcome to churches wherever you are. My name's Graham. I'm the pastor of Into One Community Church, and right now I am the president or the chair or the whatever it is that we call it of the Stouffville Christian Ministry Association. Yeah, that's a mouthful, isn't it? But I wanted to uh, to welcome you, to officially greet you, and to uh, welcome you into this highly modified strawberry festival-like experience. We couldn't we couldn't be under the tent this year, but we wanted to still take some of the essence, the gathering together part, the the, the sharing together part. And so we're going to offer you a little bit of our gluten-free, all natural, fully organic, multi-church experience. And I hope that in it you will be able to delight in it and display this. Uh, joy that we have in being united in Christ. Not not working towards unity, but we've already been united by the Holy Spirit of Jesus. We are united. May we recognize our unity. May we live it out well. You are the people of God. Wherever it is that you are gathered today, in your building or in your home or um, wherever it is that you might be viewing this, you are the holy people of God. And so our prayer for you is that you would be able to remember that, that we have one church in Stouffville, the Church of Jesus Christ. May you be blessed as you participate and engage together today with the rest of the churches in this area. May we stand together well in Jesus' name. Blessings on you. truth, Lord, your truth I see. I'll trust your words, not what I see. Grant me your blessing, your grace this day. Yet not my will, but yours I pray. May thy will be done.
Hello from Bloomington Gospel Church. I am Pastor Peter, and uh, I'm here to say um, all of our love from Bloomington. We're in this together. We're praying for you, as I'm sure you're praying for us. Um, God bless you. Hey, I'm Graham from Into One Community Church, and we are, while we're in this together, we are cheering for you. We are praying for you. Don't give up. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm Dale from High Sea Hill Church, and uh, yeah, sending our love from High Sea Hill. Hi, everyone. I'm Rick Simpson from Springvale Church. Many of you are going through difficult times, so remember, this too will end. So hang in there and seek the help that, if you need it, and don't do this alone. I'm Diane Ward from Lemonville. We send our love to everyone out there and, and pray, pray for, for everybody's, everybody's well-being well and sense of peace. Hi neighbor, my name is Joan Masterton and I bring greetings from St. James Presbyterian Church. Someone told me recently it takes 21 days to change a habit. I'm sure we have 21 more days. What habit do you want to change? Make it your COVID rev resolution. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Naomi Suggs from Restore Method of Care Canada. And I just wanted to say we are here for you if you need help. Don't hesitate to reach out. God bless. Hi everyone, I'm Nancy from Lemonville United Church sending blessings and remember that God's love is bigger than anything that you're going through right now and just our prayers are with you. Hi, I'm Bob Betson from Christ Church Anglican. May the Lord bless you and keep you and be with you in peace in during this time of trial. Amen. Hi everyone, I'm stay connected and stay blessed. I'm Pastor Paul. I'm from Starville Mandarin Island Church. Uh, my church is a new plant church. And there's still a lot of people uh, to know God and believe in God. Thank you very much. Be completely humble and gentle. Be humble. Be gentle. Be patient. Tolerate one another in an atmosphere thick with love. Bearing with one another in love. Bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit. To keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. To keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. Make every effort to keep yourself united in the Spirit, binding yourselves together with peace. Make every effort to preserve the unity the Spirit has already created. There is one body and one Spirit. There is one body and one Spirit. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. There is one Lord. One Lord. One Lord. One Lord. One Lord. One Lord, one, Lord, one faith, one baptism. There is one Lord. One faith. One baptism. One God and Father of all. One faith. One faith. One faith. One faith. One baptism. Who is over all and through all. One God and Father of all. One God and Father of all. Who is over all and through all and in all. In all and living through all the Father over all, who is above all, through all, and in all. One God of all, who is above all, and through all, and in all. Who is over all, and through all, and in all. This is the word of the Lord. Good morning, friends. My name is Dale Tollefson, and my wife Kathy and I have been leading our community of faith at Heisey Hill uh, for a little over a year and a half. And I got to say that we love our Heisey Hillers. Um, so it's my joy today to be team teaching with Ray from Eastridge and Peter from Bloomington Gospel. And we're going to do little five minute teachings on uh, something that the Bible says about how to treat each other. They're called the one another passages. And uh, eight times in the New Testament, we see uh, Paul quite often uh, uses this term, how to treat each other. So in Ephesians chapter five, Paul says to submit to one another. 
in 1 Thessalonians 5, says to encourage one another. Uh, this morning, Ray is going to talk to us about how to accept one another. Uh, Peter's going to talk to us about carrying each other's burdens. And I'm going to talk about how to serve each other and the joy and fulfillment that comes when we learn to serve and to give. In Galatians chapter 5, Paul is encouraging his readers to, um, to shake off the spiritual uh, rituals and enjoy the freedom that comes in Jesus. And after saying that, he says in verse 13 of Galatians 5, For you have been called to live in freedom, my brothers and sisters. Don't use your freedom to satisfy your sinful nature. Instead, use your freedom to serve one another in love. For the whole law can be summed up in this one commandment, love your neighbor as yourself. You know, recently I was reading in Mark chapter 6, uh, when Jesus fed the 5,000 men plus the women and children, and this principle popped up again in a rather unexpected and surprising way uh, for the disciples, this principle of serving uh, each other. In uh, Mark chapter 6, Jesus is with a bunch of people, thousands of people out in a remote part of the country. And uh, a problem creeps up as the day goes on. It's getting late in the day and they're out in a very remote area and, and, um, and uh, people are getting hungry and, and evidently people didn't bring enough food and they didn't plan to be out there the whole day. And so the disciples come to Jesus and, and they say, hey, Jesus, we got a problem. Like we need to send these people away so they can go, you know, buy some food. And uh, verse 35 of Mark 6 says, Late in the afternoon, his disciples came to him and said, This is a remote place, and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the nearby uh, farms and villages and buy something to eat. But Jesus turned the tables on them, and he said, You feed them. With what, they asked. We've had to work, we'd have to work for months to earn enough money to buy food for all these people. When the disciples approached Jesus with this, a little bit of a problem that people needed to eat something, uh, they fully expected Jesus to take care of it because Jesus always took care of it. Jesus was the one who served. Jesus was the one who healed. He was the one who taught. They were a supporting uh, structure for Jesus in a sense, and they were, of course, learning. Uh, but, um, but Jesus was the one who always did it. And what I see here is that Jesus was pushing his disciples to the front for them to be doing the serving. Uh, earlier in Mark 6, we see that Jesus sent the disciples out into local communities to, to preach and to heal and, uh, and to help people in local communities. He was pushing them out. And, and he does the same thing here uh, in, uh, in verses 35 and 36. The disciples said, Jesus, you feed them. And he said, no, you feed them. Why did Jesus do this? I think that there are a few different reasons, but what I want to focus on today is that Jesus, I think, was pushing the disciples to a new level in their spiritual journey. You see, up until this point, they were a support structure for Jesus and they were there to learn, but Jesus was pushing them from being consumers to contributors from being consumers to contributors. And he was encouraging them, he was pushing them to be part of the solution. Friends, I don't know what this might speak to you, but um, I think that Jesus today is encouraging us in the church to move from consumers to, contribut to, to contributors. When we think about um, how uh, the significance of life or the purpose of life, if I were to ask you this question, why do you exist? What is, what is your purpose in life? And if you're a spiritual person, you'd probably say that, you know, uh, you, you might say that your purpose in life is to serve God and, and to worship God. Or if you're family oriented, you might say that your purpose in life is uh, to you know, raise the children or provide for your family. Or if you're uh, socially aware, you might say that your purpose in life is to make a difference in this world, to leave the world a better place, Whatever, however you might answer that. But friends, here's the thing, that if you answer the question, what is my purpose in life outside of yourself, to serve somebody else, God, family, nation, 
the world, if you answer that question to serve somebody else, then you're on the track to finding true joy and true fulfillment. I often think about the quote by Aristotle when he said that finding happiness and fulfillment is achieved by loving rather than being loved, by loving rather than being loved. In a similar way, happiness is found, it's achieved when we uh, serve rather than being served. So can I challenge you with this today? Would you find somebody to serve? Would you uh, be generous with your resources and share of yourself? Would you find somebody to share your friendship with, or maybe find somebody to share your skills with, whatever that might mean, or maybe find somebody to share your stuff with, whatever you do, would you find somebody to serve today? And I truly believe that when you do, uh, that you'll find true joy and fulfillment in life. God bless you, my friends. It's great to be with you. Have a great day.
Let's pray. Heavenly Father, you are the almighty God, and we acknowledge your reign and sovereignty over our town, Richard Stouffville. During this pandemic, we've seen and have experienced many challenges that we would never have imagined. People have lost family members due to COVID-19, and some have lost loved ones due to other issues, and we're not able to attend funerals or hug each other for comfort. We pray your love to be the comfort and peace they need as they continue to mourn. Some have experienced loss of jobs, their businesses closing, and or financial hardship. We seek wisdom as to how to navigate our lives during these uncertain times and for your provision to supply all of our needs. We pray the church would be a beacon of light and be a great example of taking care of one another and loving each other, no matter your ethnicity, race, religion. May the body of Christ stand strong, united on Jesus Christ, our cornerstone, as we be the church you called us to be. We pray for continued blessings upon our church fellowships as we figure out new ways to have services and invest in our people in the months ahead. We know you already knew what 2020 would look like. And we also know you hold our future. All your promises are true. And your word says, if God is for us, who can be against us? We commit every church and all the dear people of Richard Stovall into your ever loving hands. In Jesus name we pray, amen. Hi, my name is Naomi Suggs and I am the care coordinator for Restore Canada here in Stouffville. It's a local charity that is currently partnering with the churches that belong to the Stouffville Ministerial. And I just wanted to take a few minutes to introduce myself and tell you a little bit about what Restore does. I've been working with Restore for about five years now, um, and we are here to help those in your community who are in distress. We have a hotline set up so that people can reach out to us when they're in some sort of distress, whether it be financial, emotional, they need housing, they need a job, um, just they find themselves in a situation that they can't figure out how to get themselves out of, and that's why we're here. And so they will call us, we'll reach out back to them, and then we'll pair them up with a care planner that's a volunteer from one of your local churches. Um, and that care planner will meet with them, um, discuss their situation, and help them find a way forward um, through the distress that they are experiencing. And um, I just wanted to share a quick story with you. We recently had someone um, give us a call right at the beginning of when COVID was starting and she was experiencing a little bit of financial distress because of COVID. Um, government benefits hadn't kicked in at that point. We didn't know that there was um, there was or what was coming from the government. Um, so she, as a self-employed person, um, wasn't able to find the work that she was previously doing because of all the closures. So she was experiencing a little bit of um, financial distress. So she reached out to us. We paired her with a care planner from one of the local churches here in Stouffville. And that care planner met with her virtually and um, figured out a way forward for them. Was able to sort out some immediate financial assistance in the form of gift cards for groceries. Um, and helped walk her through a few steps until at that point when the government benefits finally kicked in for COVID. Um, we are still in touch with this client. We um, wanted to make sure that we walk through the whole process with her um, to where she's back on her feet, uh, self-sufficient um, and no longer in a position of distress. That's just one example of the kind of um, situation that we deal with here at Restore Canada um, with the help of the Stolva Ministerial. And I just wanted to say thank you so much to all the churches here in Stovall that are part of the ministerial that partner with us. Um, you're doing great work and we're so thankful for your partnership. And um, if anybody has any questions or you'd like more information, you can look up uh, Restore on our website at www.restorecanada.org. 
and um, there's plenty of information there. Or you can email me at info at restorecanada.org and ask any questions you'd like. If you're interested in um, donating and helping financially, you can do that as well on our website at www.restorecanada.org slash donate. Thank you so much and God bless you. Well, good morning, friends. I'm Pastor Ray, lead pastor at East Ridge Church. And it's an honor to be with you today for our online Strawberry Festival service. Um, last year, this time, I had the opportunity to share the word with all of you. And something happened in our city this time last year. Remember what it was? I hope you do. The Raptors were the 2019 NBA champs. And our, all of Toronto was going nuts. And uh, you want to know something? for 2020 the Raptors are still the reigning champs all right <laughs> uh, but that being said there was a phrase going around during that time and everyone was saying we the north we the north and I remember from the stage I told you hey we got to change that we got to say we the church folks and you know what that still rings true today we are the church and we stand stronger and better together than apart and so what a joy it is for the churches to come together for this service today, for the Strawberry Festival service. Uh, even though it's happening online, it's okay. We may not be together, uh, but the joys of technology can still connect us. That being said, um, standing strong together, um, we're going to go through several verses today talking about uh, the one another verses in the Bible. And so I have the honor to go through uh, Romans 15 verse 7. And it says this, Accept one another then, just as Christ accepted you, in order to bring praise to God. You know, when you think about accepting one another, this verse rings so true right now, especially with everything that's been going around, going on around in the world. Um, you, you, you've been seeing the world respond to racism and injustice. And, and when, you th when you hear this verse, accept one another, um, that can be hard at times. You know, it can be hard to accept someone, as we've been seeing with how the world is, accepting someone based on their color, their gender, uh, their lifestyle choices, things they've said, things they've done. The list goes on and on. It can be hard to accept others. Um, but yet the Bible tells us that we ought to accept one another. And I, I love how the Bible puts it because it doesn't just say accept one another uh, on your own strength, out of your own willpower. No, it says accept one another just as Christ accepted you. God's Word gives you the grace, the, 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 the strength to go and do what it's asking you to do. And so, let's spend, spend a quick moment there. Just as Christ accepted you. Wow, when you think about what Christ has done. Earlier in the book of Romans, uh, Romans 5 verse 8, maybe it's a familiar verse to you, and it says, Paul writes this, but God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Hear that for a moment. Even when we are at our ugliest, at our filthiest, at our lowest points, Christ still died for you and I. And if Christ could do that, even at our dirtiest moments, at our filthiest times, having nothing to do with what we, we've done, no matter how good we were or, or what, how things that we've said. There's just no way for us to earn and be perfect in His sight. But yet He still loved us enough to go on the cross. And so He died for us because of His love for you and I. And in turn, I associate acceptance with love. And so when we go back to the verse, love, uh, accept one another as Christ has accepted you. When you see that He accepted you, that's what gives you the strength to accept others. And here, here's one more thing. The people that you find hard to accept, think about it this way. Christ also accepted them. Christ also died for them. Christ also loves them. Yes, we may not approve of everyone's uh, choices and things that they've said or done, but our job is not to judge. That's His job. Our job is to love. That's what we're called to do as believers, as the church. And so when we go forth and love people, listen, 
we can love people into wholeness. So let's accept people for who they are, as they are, because that is what the churches ought to be known for. Okay? So I'm going to end off there um, and, and just let you know, similar to what Jesus said himself during the Last Supper, he said to his disciples, I give you a new commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. It's no longer just love your neighbor anymore. Those are people in close proximity. It's love one another. I believe he thought of us in the future. Love everyone the way that I have loved you. And how did he do it? By laying down his life, by sacrificing. That's real love. That's the God kind of love. And so let's show that through our words and our actions to those around us in our church, in our town, and beyond. Let's be the church and let's stand together. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you and protect you this week. May he shower his favor on you and give you his shalom peace. God bless you. Come thou fount of every blessing to my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing Call for songs of loudest praise and Teach me some melodious song And sung by flaming tongues above Praise the mountain fixed upon it The mount of thy reign Redeeming love and sing here I raise here I raise my Ebenezer hither by thy help I come and I hope by thy good pleasure safely to arrive at home Jesus saw me when a stranger wandering from the fold of God he to rescue me from danger interpose his precious blood Let's sing out how your kindness and how your kindness yet pursues me how your mercy never fails me until the day that death shall loose me I will sing oh I will sing let's sing out together oh to grace oh to grace how Great a debtor, daily I'm constrained to be. Let thy goodness, like a fetter, bind my wandering heart to thee. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart. Take it, seal it, seal it for thy courts above. How your kindness yet pursues me, how your mercy never fails me to the day that death shall lose me.
to wander, Lord, I feel it, prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, Lord, take and seal it, seal it for thy courts above. Here's my heart, here's my heart, Lord. Take and seal it, seal it for thy courts of Hello from Bloomington. I'm Pastor Peter. One of the things that I love about living in Stouffville is the large Christian family that we enjoy here together. As part of the ministerial, I've got to know many of my fellow ministers in town. And one of the joys that we have is being able to sit down together and share our lives, share our ministries, and care for one another and pray for each other. Loving one another is uh, one of God's greatest commandments for us, his children. In this family, God says, we care for each other. In Galatians chapter 6, verse 2, we find one of the one another commandments. Here we see, bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. Bear one another's burdens. Sometimes our struggles, our cares, our needs feel like this great burden, this great pack, this baggage, this luggage that we are struggling to carry on our own. We feel overwhelmed. We feel we don't have enough strength but we don't have to do it alone. We have a loving Heavenly Father who cares very much about us and is able to help us, but we're also part of his family. And God has instructed us to care for one another and to bear one another's burdens. But what does that look like? What are we talking about here? What are these burdens? Well, I have in mind three types of burdens and ways in which we can respond to those burdens. So let me run through those really quickly. The first is burdens of practical need, um, circumstantial burdens, if you will. In Matthew chapter 25, Jesus is telling a parable. He's telling a story. He's giving an illustration of what it will be like one day when we stand before him. He says there will be two kinds of people there, people who are righteous, people who are uh, like me and who follow after me and and people who are unrighteous and the hallmark of the righteous person is in this story that jesus is telling is that they care for others in fact the way jesus tells it they're caring for him let me read some of those verses from matthew chapter 25. jesus says for i was hungry and you gave me food i was thirsty and you gave me drink I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry, and feed you, or thirsty, and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger, and welcome you, or naked, and clothe you? And when did we see you sick, or in prison, and visit you? The king will answer, truly I say to you, as you did to one of the least of these, my brothers, you did for me. Practical needs need meeting. Sometimes the burdens that we carry are the kinds of burdens that someone else can come and lift for us, put on their shoulder for a while, or take it off our shoulders altogether. Sometimes the burdens that we carry, we don't have to carry. Someone else can carry them, someone who's more able to carry them. Uh, That's one kind of burden. Uh, Circumstance, need, practical things that we can do for each other to, to meet the burden, to lift the burden, to relieve someone of the burden. But then there's another type of burden. Uh, And I think an example of this would be burdens of relationship. Sometimes people are hurting. The burden that they have is a hurt uh, over uh, a loss. Sometimes grief is a burden. 
sometimes uh, heartache or heartbreak over a fractured relationship or worrying about a loved one or a child or a parent. Those are burdens that we can't relieve, we can't just answer, we can't solve. But those, those are burdens that we can come alongside and care for the person who is carrying the burden. In Romans chapter 12, verse 15, we read, Rejoice with those who rejoice, and weep with those who weep. Coming alongside someone and sharing in their burden. And sometimes we're not removing it or lifting it. Sometimes we're helping to carry the person who is shouldering that burden themselves. Sometimes we're coming alongside to be the caring presence, the loving friend, to offer support for the person who is shouldering the burden themselves. And the third type of burden that comes to mind is one where we we can't be there. We can't care for the person in person. Perhaps we don't even know the person. We know of the burden and we know of the struggle. We can't answer it personally. We can't remove the burden and we can't help the person who's carrying it. But we have a Heavenly Father who can. And so the third way that we can carry one another's burdens or help each other with our burdens is to pray. I think we undervalue prayer. We underestimate its importance. We don't pray enough. Paul understood prayer. And he said in one of his letters, I urge you, brothers, by our Lord Jesus Christ and by the love of the Spirit, to join me in my struggle by praying to God for me. Did you hear that? Join me in my struggle by praying to God for me. I know you can't be here. I know you can't take the struggle away. But you can pray. Please pray. Three ways that we can bear one another's burdens. We can lift the burdens sometimes ourselves. We can care for the person who must shoulder the burden, and we can pray. And all of those are ways in which we show the love of Christ, fulfill the law of Christ. What is the law of Christ that that verse talks about? Bear one another's burdens and fulfill the law of Christ. Well, a few verses earlier there in Galatians, in Galatians 5.14, we read, The whole law is fulfilled in one word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. When we bear each other's burdens by lending a hand, by being a caring friend, or by praying for God's help, we are demonstrating the love of Christ, and we are demonstrating love for our neighbor. And we're following in Christ's footsteps. We're being like our Heavenly Father, who God, who is love. We're being like our Savior, Jesus Christ, who bore our burdens. He himself, Jesus Christ, bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. We bore the burden of sin, the guilt of sin, and would have borne the consequence of sin. By God sent his Son, Jesus Christ, to bear our burden upon himself, to bear sin upon himself, and the consequence of sin, so that we can walk free of that burden. So, be like our Heavenly Father. Be like our Savior. Care about one another. Bear one another's burdens and fulfill the law of Christ. What a privilege it is to be part of God's family, God who loves us. What a privilege to learn from him and to become like him and to experience his love in our lives as we care for each other. Yeah.
You 